In this short video, we're going to finish up our discussion of homogeneous systems and consider those systems which have complex eigenvalues. So consider this linear system of differential equations, uh, which in matrix form we can write as a vector x. So let's make that a vector. Vector x prime equals the matrix 6, negative 1, 5, 4 times the vector x. All right. So if we look at our characteristic equation, we get this quadratic equation in terms of lambda. We'll use the quadratic formula to go ahead and find the eigenvalues, which are going to be complex conjugate pairs. So here we have 5 plus 2i and 5 minus 2i. So calculating the eigenvector, we're going to use the usual procedure. We're going to go ahead and put 5 plus 2i in the place of lambda in a minus lambda i. And then we're going to try to uh, use some elementary row operations to simplify this. First of all, uh, I really want to uh, well, collect the like terms. That's a good idea. Then I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, multiply then what the uh, top row by its conjugate so that I get a real number in the 1, 1 place here, 1, 1 position. And then I can see that, oh, these two rows are identical. So if I subtract the first row from the bottom row, I get a row of zeros, which is exactly what I would expect. And uh, that tells me the relationship between the x and y components of this eigenvector. That is, y is going to be a free variable. And then I'll have 5x minus the complex number 1 plus 2i times y will equal 0. So since y is free, I'm just going to choose uh, y to be the number 5, which will tell me then that uh, x is the coefficient on y, which is the complex number 1 plus 2i. So I get my first eigenvector with components 1 plus 2i and 5. And then this is where I get a break, because remember, when I have complex conjugate pairs for the eigenvalues, then the eigenvectors are also complex conjugates of each other. So I don't need to do any algebra for 5 minus 2i. I just take the complex conjugate of k1, and that will give me k2. All right, so I've got my uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And the problem with this is that uh, all right, we have complex conjugates, so that's good. And we can write the general solution just the way this is. And this is a solution. There's, there's, that's fine. However, in this course, we want to avoid complex-valued solutions, solutions which are written in terms of complex numbers. Uh, so what will we do? Well, we'll do the same thing that we have done in the past. We'll write the e to the 5 plus 2it using Euler's formula, and then use some identities. And from there, we can get some solutions in real forms in terms of sine and cosines. So we're going to use alpha for the real part and beta for the imaginary part, so the, the part that's multiplied times i. So in our example, alpha is 5 and beta is 2. And we're going to find two new vectors. Vector b1 is going to be the real part. Now, this formula, we shouldn't even think about it. We should just think of the real part of k1. What does that mean? Well, that means that if I look at k1, in each component, I just look at the real numbered part. So in the real part of k1 would be the vector with entries 1 and 5. b2 is the imaginary part. So in the first component of k1, the imaginary part is 2. And then since 
the second component doesn't have anything multiplied by i, the imaginary part is zero. And then once I have those, uh, I can get two solutions. Both will be multiplied by e to the alpha t. Both will have coefficient vectors b1 and b2. And then the uh, each will have a term cosine of beta t and sine of beta t. And the only thing that differs between our two solutions is that one is going to be a plus and the other one is going to have a minus inside the brackets. And that would make sense because all you're doing to get the second solution is you're replacing beta with negative beta. And since cosine of negative beta t would be the same as cosine of beta t, while sine of negative beta t would be the opposite of sine of beta t. So that's why your minus becomes a plus for the second solution. So in our example, again, the real part of k1 is the vector 1, 5. The imaginary part is 2, 0. And so I can put those into the uh, formula that was given to get our general solution, which is real value.